So I'm a game developer, and recently I've been trying to get into desktop application development. I've tried a ton of different approaches, one of them being Electron, and I just really don't like writing JavaScript, and the bundle size is way too big. I've also tried Qt, but I'm really afraid of the licensing to the point where I don't really want to make anything serious in it. And I've tried other different C++ uh, GUI libraries, and they're all either very outdated with poor documentation, or they're not cross-platform, which is important for me. And so I began searching for alternatives, maybe outside of the language of C++, something that is cross-platform and is easy to use coming from a background of game development. And I settled on eGUI. eGUI is an immediate mode UI library written in Rust. Now, if you're not familiar with Rust, don't worry. I will not get super, super detailed into Rust. I'm going to focus on more of the fundamental concepts of eGUI to sort of pitch this to you. Why should you even bother trying to learn something in possibly a foreign language? So first, what is immediate mode UI? Uh, well, immediate mode UI goes hand in hand with game development. It's basically where you add, calculate, and draw all of the widgets on your screen every single frame. Now, this should sound familiar to game developers because that's how we make games. We have all of our sprites and we update all of their positions and then redraw them every single frame. So transitioning over from making an immediate video game to an immediate mode desktop application is a lot smoother than, let's say, going to a retained mode UI. So that's why I enjoy it so much. Without further ado, let's get into it. Again, most people probably haven't worked with Rust, so you have to install the language first. Go to rust-lang.org and go to the install and just run the installer. No secrets here, it's just a simple installation. Rust comes with Cargo, which is awesome. It's their package manager and it makes working with dependencies so much easier than in a language like C++. Again, we're going to be using eGUI, but we're also going to be using eFrame, which is the official eGUI framework. Basically, it turns your UI, which is normally embedded into things like Bevy or other graphics APIs. Um, instead, it makes it its own standalone application. So we're going to be using eFrame and eGUI. So how do we create a Rust project? Well, I'm going to open up a terminal here inside of a folder that we want to use, and I'm just going to run cargo init. This will just create a Rust project here. Now we want to add our dependencies. And so we just go to the cargo.toml and under the dependencies here, we just add them. So we're going to be adding eframe. And then on the right side of the equal sign, we want to add the version. And if you just do star, um, it'll just pick the latest version of the crate. And so that's what I want to do because I don't really care about the versions too much. And I'll just add eGUI as well, same deal. And now we have to build our application. Now this is cool, if you have um, the toml installed the cargo toml it's an extension i believe if we look up toml here it should be ex uh, here or even better toml if you install this it will actually tell you if this is a real crate so it, it's great for managing headaches like that also i'd install while you're here i'd install the rust analyzer right here there's the rust here install that and then rust analyzer that will just make your experience running rust so much better but now that you've added your dependencies and you do cargo run it will build for the first time. Now, yes, building takes longer than other um, languages. That's not a lie. But once it's built, it's going to be cached. And from now on, it's only going to have to rebuild your code. So it's going to be very, very fast. So yes, that took 15 seconds to run this Hello World program. But if I do it again here, look at that. It just immediately did it because it only has to recompile this. Okay, so without, you know, let's stop pitching Rust and actually writing a program. So I'm going to import uh, eframe by using the use keyword and then just eframe here and I'll import everything from it. Let's go ahead and make an app. Well, an app is represented by a struct. Um, so I'm gonna create a struct here and I'm just gonna call it my app. Now in order to make this an eframe app, we have to implement a trait and think of a trait like an interface in C++. We need to basically implement all of the functions that have not been implemented already by default. So let's go ahead and do that. So for that, we use impl, which just means implement. Implement eframe app for my app. And basically, it's going to have this huge error, hover over it, and it will tell you what to do. Not all trait items implemented, missing update. Okay, so let's implement update. Fn, and let's just go to our update. It'll, if you have Rust Analyzer installed, it should tell you, hey, these are all the ones that you need to implement or could implement. Update is the minimum amount that you have to implement. So let's go ahead and do it. This is the method that is called every frame. And so here's where we're gonna be writing all of our GUI. Let's go ahead and write a simple app that has a label on it that says hello world. 
So we need to first put this on some sort of layout. And so I'm going to use a central panel layout, which is just a standard screen panel. And so I'll use the central panel. You can see that it's inside of the eGUI crate. So if we just press tab here, it will automatically import that for us. Colon colon default will actually create a default instance of the central panel. And then we want to show it on the screen. So we do dot show. It needs to uh, take our eGUI context here, which is passed in automatically in the update. And then it also has this add context. Now this is the first uh, Rust specific weird quirky little part of the language. It's what's known as a closure, which does exist in other languages, but it's a little bit interesting with this one. For in a closure in Rust, you want to do these two pillars, and then it will also tell you what needs to be in there. So if we go back here and we look at this uh, function signature here, add context, implement fn once, takes in a UI, and returns a response. And so we need to write a closure that takes in a UI and then add curly brackets to finish off that closure and add a semicolon at the end of this because the update re returns void. And then we just basically do something with this. I'm just going to add our label. And the way we do that is we use this UI that, that's uh, given to us in this closure. So we just do like UI dot and then we have all these options, a lot of options. We want label and I'll just put hello world here. And there you go. We have hello world. Okay, so that's an app. We just need to run it now. Um, and eGUI or eFrame provides this really, really um, simple way to run an application. It's this run native function here. Press tab and it will give us these three fields that we have to fill out. First is the app name. It's just a string slice. So I'll just say uh, my app. Next one is the native options. And I'm just going to use the default ones uh, for now. So I do native options, colon, colon, and default here. Default again will just provide the default native options the same way that central panel default will provide this, the default central panel. Then we have the app creator. Now this is a crazy argument. <laughs> this tripped me up so much when I was learning eGUI, but basically let's read it and let's break it down. App creator is of type a box that encapsulates a closure that takes in a creation context that returns a box of our application. Now box in Rust, if you're not familiar, is basically Think of like a unique pointer in C++. It basically holds heap allocated memory and it's one of the most popular ways to do that. And so we're gonna be using a box here to encapsulate a closure that gives us a creation context uh, passed through the closure. And then we just need to return our heap allocated app. That's still a lot. So honestly, if you just wanna like follow along exactly with what I'm doing, that's totally cool because I understand where you're coming from. So let's go ahead and write box new. And then inside of here, we'll write our closure with our creation context. I'm gonna call it CC. And then the curly brackets here. Now we need to return our app, but inside of a box. So just do box new. And then I'll just do my app with empty curly brackets. Now you'll notice that I didn't say return here explicitly. That's because if you leave the last line of a function or a closure um, without a semicolon, then it will just return the last line. So that's a pretty weird quirk about Rust, but yeah, that's why there's no return. It would be the same as doing this return here, but it's not necessary. Now you'll notice that there's a ton of lines over here and it's basically saying unused result. And yes, if we hover over run native, it returns a result. And so what we have to do now is basically just return an eframe result here. And now if it's a success, then we don't return anything because we don't need to. But if it's a failure, we probably want to know what the failure is. So we're going to say eframe error. And of course, now to return things again, we can use that same principle we learned earlier, remove the semicolon at, at run native, and it will automatically return that. What you'll also notice is that there are some weird squiggly lines that are saying, you know, like this is unused code CC and unused code frame. If you're like me and you have to get rid of all squiggly lines before you run a program or you'll lose your mind, if you prefix them with an underscore, that error will go away. There's also like ways to say like allow unused code, but that's kind of out of the scope of this video. There you go, 22 lines of code and we have ourselves an app. This will run. We can do cargo run here. And boom, we have an application with Hello World. You can highlight it, all that sort of stuff. Very cool stuff, awesome. And so yes, this was a ton of Rust jargon that was just dumped on you, but it's still only 22 lines of code. And by the way, if I were to copy and paste this code, or this, this if I were to just open this project on my MacBook and run it, it would run. It is automatically cross-platform with Windows and Mac, which is so awesome. There is no additional work that I've seen that you need to do for this.
But let's also show like another powerful reason why you should use eGUI for your simple applications. Um, it's very straightforward. So we can create like, let's for example, let's create a button. I'll do UI.button here. And I'll say like, click me inside of it, why not? Now, if we hover over this, you see there's a squiggly line again, it'll say unuse return value, and it will say that it returns a response. Well, what is a response? Let's go ahead and just type it out here so we can hover over. A response is, well, okay, it's got a lot of stuff, context, layer ID, ID, rect, all that sort of stuff, but it has stuff like hovered, highlighted, clicked, drag started, dragged, all these sort of things here. So why don't we do this? Let button response equal UI.button. And then we'll say if button response dot clicked, print line clicked. And now we can go ahead and run this code and click it. And look, we have print statements. And it's really, really awesome because we can do like hovered here and we could say hovered here. Look at that, isn't that awesome? Now you can't tell because there's so many, but every time I hover over it, it's printing more. Very, very powerful stuff. And so I don't want to get too crazy with this, but I do, I will show you like a little tool that I wrote with it. This is a little image converter. I wrote it in like not even three hours. It just takes in a directory and an out directory and it converts your image to whatever format you want. And I wrote it with ease. It was, it was actually the way that I learned Rust was this, this is my first Rust project. And honestly, it's just been a blast ever since. I highly recommend this because it, it's just so much easier to work with than a retained mode UI coming from a game development background. Now, this doesn't mean to just like avoid retained mode UIs, but if you want to get into desktop ap application development and you're afraid of that huge jump to a whole different paradigm, maybe you should try this out. And you get the benefit of learning Rust on the way. So that's pretty much all I have for you today. If you have any questions, uh, make sure to join my Discord. I'll be answering a ton of questions there. And there's some other great minds that will help you out as well. Um, also, if you want a like tutorial series on this, I'm still learning the inner quirks of this, but I would absolutely love to write one in the future. So let me know if that's something you want. And consider supporting me on Patreon so I can continue making videos for you like this. Thank you very much for watching. Have a good day. See ya.